Let's go to Tom Murphy, bring him in this morning into the fold for Base Mile. Now, now Tom, Bob told me that he's taking a, a little vacation, so it looks like you're getting the, the chance to go to, to Omaha and watch Arkansas advance, and I know you've been watching them and, and keeping up with them. Uh, pitching performances from Connor Nolan and Will McIntyre this weekend were key. Peyton Stovall's gotten hot. Brady Slavin's had a couple big-time hits, including the uh, the walk-off yesterday. Uh, just kind of your uh, nutshell takeaway from Arkansas advancing to, to Omaha once again. Yeah, good morning, guys. A pleasure to be with you. Tommy, I'm going to take the opposing side, mm-hmm. and selfishly, I want the 1 o'clock game. <laughs> <laughs> Spoken like a man uh, with a deadline. So Yeah, because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be there. But, no, six – Six is not horrible unless you have a bunch of rain delays like, like yesterday. So, <laughs> you know, I, I, we've been in Florida and uh, for the past several days, and uh, I've been obviously tracking everything, but not watching, but just keeping track on stat broadcasts and stuff. And I have to say, yeah, Nolan, um, his last two starts obviously have been just golden. You know, six plus, holding the team down. Um, boy, if they get that first game of the College World Series, that will be such a bonus. And then, um, yeah, you know, Dave talked about the composition of the lineup the other day and why he did some things. And he's just like, I just like Brady Slavens in the two hole. Well, you know, modern day baseball, two hole is quite often your highest batting average guy. Um, and the, people put run producers there. And, and, and Brady Slavens uh, doesn't have the highest average on the team. But, you know, he had the big, you know, two different RBI opportunities in, in the first game. And then, of course, the game winner yesterday so it looks like that was just a stroke of genius having Slavens in the two hole and what can you say shout out to the guys at the bottom of the order but you know battles getting on to start mm-hmm. things and then Stovall I mean think about where Peyton Stovall was you know six weeks ago versus where he is right now so valuable um and he found his spot you know uh, next year will be different but for this team the leadoff was not what he needed all that pressure and all that so He's being he, he's being remarkable in the eight hole, and right now, I mean, I just think they have so much confidence. No matter what part of their lineup comes up, that somebody's going to get on base and somebody's going to drive them in. So they are, you know, you think about Hoover two weeks ago where they were, and then you think about right now, it's a totally different place. It's somewhat reminiscent of Mississippi State going zero and two and Hoover and looking bad, and then you know they go to the they win it all. Yeah, Connor Nolan has been the one that steadied the ship and gotten him off to a good start. Even though he had a rough first inning on Saturday, uh, he pitched his way out of it and made the defensive play to end the inning. Tom, starting pitching, uh, you get a little more rest. You might get to see Connor Nolan if things go right uh, uh, in games one and three, perhaps, if you win your first two. So uh, to, to the victor goes the spoils. Uh, give us your, your thoughts on Connor Nolan, who went six and two-thirds, no run on six hits, struck out six, and route to an Arkansas win four to one on Saturday against North Carolina. Well, based on everything I saw, it looks like the slider was on. And so um, the uh, NC State coach complimented him that, you know, the guys, the guys just couldn't barrel up his slider well. And, and when you've got a, a secondary pitch like that to, to go with your, your fastball and your curve, it just makes you so much tougher. And if, if, he can, if he can land that, um, he's going to be a hard guy. I mean, just because of his veteran status, he doesn't get, get rattled at all. The first inning didn't phase him. Getting hit by another ball didn't phase him. So he's just what the guy you want at the top of your rotation. And I think it's funny or interesting that he is where he is. But, you know, two weeks ago he had a 5-5 five and five record. And when opposing teams see that, they go like, wow, they're Friday night guys 5-5. Five and five. Well, He's a different seven and five now. Mm-hmm. And then I just think they get to um I I'm not gonna say play with, but they can they can do matchups now for the, the rest of the of the of the their appearance. They can go lefty righty, they can start Zach Morris in a the game, they can start Hagan Smith, they can start Will McIntyre, they can start Jackson Wiggins. But they've got two lefties, two righties, and then they can deploy them in any kind of way they want. So I think in a way the, the 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 starts that Wiggins and Smith had the last couple of weekends of the season, I think in a way has turned into a positive that, that you know, now you've had Smith save a game. Uh, you've had Tiger, you know, maybe slip a little bit. But if you can get him back um, getting out and, and landing his curveball, then suddenly you've got, you've got multiple guys start. 
multiple guys who can give you long relief, um, and then multiple guys who can close the game for you. So, so I, I don't know the way you yeah. see their their order working and the way you see the, the the different versatility of their their pitching staff. They're in a pretty good spot. With six of the eight spots already uh, secured in Omaha, and we still got to see what happens with Stanford, UConn, and Auburn, Oregon State today. What's your first read on this field, and in particular bracket two, which is only halfway complete? What's your read on this field and Arkansas's chances over the next uh, ten or twelve days? Well, I'll tell you my read on this field, man. The rest of the country groans as three SEC teams are already in. Two more teams who are heading to the SEC are in, and if I'm seeing this bracket right playing each other, Texas and OU, um, and A&M's in there, and it's like the SEC West homecoming week, man. Uh, Ole Miss is on absolute fire, shutting Southern Miss out both games, um, and I guess they get the um, they get the uh, Auburn mm-hmm. and Oregon State winner, and so if, if, the, if the West, if the Pac-12 wants to be represented, you know, they've got both their teams at home today, in Stanford and Oregon State, and they're quality teams, um, then, it's obvi- then it's obviously a SEC versus Pac-12. But if Auburn wins, and um, it doesn't matter between UConn and Stanford, uh, which, which would funnel into Arkansas, um, you, you know, you've got a team that's already beaten Arkansas in Stanford. And, and UConn, I do not know a whole lot about them other than their, their Friday guy must be pretty studly because they whip Stanford good. So uh, I'll get a much better read the next day or two um, heading into our Thursday appearance on on here. So um, just that Ole Miss is a team to be wary of, and now Arkansas has played themselves into that very position, you know, the team that we thought they could be. And when you make it to Omaha, it's been a successful year, especially considering, you know, what they've gone through at the end of the year. We're talking with Tom Murphy, Arkansas Democrat Gazette, Whole Hog Sports here this morning. And we'll get into some more audio coming up. Uh, with Dave Van Horn, Brady Slavens, and also uh, Steve Forbes. Let's shift gears to other college baseball. And I think Tommy was talking about it and said it best earlier, Tom. When you showboat like Tennessee has and you lose and you fall short of your goal, that leaves you open for target practice, essentially, on social yeah. media. And, and fans have done that across the board. Tennessee fans have not been happy uh, just what did you think of how their season concluded and kind of how they've gone about their season as a whole? Well, look, for starters, I like Tony Vitello. I, I like it that he wants his players to have fun. However, uh, they have created of their own accord this us against the world deal. And honestly, when uh, the brackets were announced, the host asked Kyle Peterson, um, who do you got, Tennessee or the field? And I, I, I don't remember what Kyle said, but my immediately the immediate thought that popped into my head was the field. There's so much pressure on Tennessee. And, you know, yeah, they were the favorite. Yeah, they had the better, better pitching staff, depth of hitting, power, everything. Uh, but you, you amped up. The Notre Dame coach, I saw a clip preceding that series, and he goes, college baseball, this is going to be – unbelievable series for college baseball. He knew his team was going to be ready. Um, and, and Tennessee had some gas. And honestly, that was not a good look by Drew Gilbert. It just it was a bad look. And, yes, they opened themselves up for anything social media could throw at them. Um, I'm sure they're going to be good again next year. But I think Tony, when his pitching coach runs, you know, comes out of the dugout, I think that's an auto-ejection. And they're arguing over a guy getting tossed, and he's the pitching coach. Tony has got to exert his control over that program and say no one leaves the dugout or, or they f- face other consequences because it, it, it didn't look good. And fans throwing stuff on the field doesn't look good. Tennessee baseball, I salute what they did this year, the they, way they just crushed people. But it didn't happen for them. And, and you know what? It, in a different way, it was like Arkansas season last year when you're number one that long. It just, it just there's a weight to that. Um, Arkansas didn't showboat and do all that kind of stuff. There was a weight, just like Tennessee felt this year. Yeah, and the the field, it's still crazy that since 1999, you haven't had that national overall number one seed that's gone on to, to win the College World Series. I think Arkansas fans, unfortunately, know all too well 
based on what happened last year. So, Tom, I know you'll you'll get a little more feel of the rest of not just the the opponents that Arkansas played initially, which will be UConn or Stanford, but the other opponents. But how about the fact that we got all these SEC teams that you alluded to earlier and um, some really in, intriguing matchups for, I think, Arkansas fans with all these teams that I think they're looking forward to hopefully battle at some point this weekend. And, oh, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, you think about Texas A&M. I mean, this is a, this is a huge year for Schlossnagel in his first season. They're, I'm sure they'll turn out very well. Um, OU and Texas, it's, it's, you know, you don't bracket. It wasn't bracketed like Texas and OU were SEC teams, but um, that's the way it turned out. I mean, like, they weren't in brackets that uh, – it's not like it will be the SEC in a few years where they separate all the teams, but that's the way it played out. And here they are playing each other, so that's going to be kind of some madness right there. Uh, it's um, it's it's dominant by SEC and soon to be SEC is what it is. Yeah, I'm trying to. I'm just listening to you kind of describe the dominance there. I'm going through. Is this now three of four? Because the COVID year messes me up. Three of the last four College World Series Arkansas has been in. Yes. I believe that's right. So, I mean, yeah, it is. Let, let's just think about where Arkansas's place is now. Now, you got to punch your ticket as a national champion at some point. But, Tom, in, in your mind and your estimate, now I'm going to three of the last four uh, factoring in the COVID year, where is Arkansas's place now, not only in the league, but nationally as a program? Well, I mean, they were top 10. Look, even when they weren't hitting so well early in the year, um, losing some games that were a little bit eye opening. They were top ten all year long in the, in the coaches' poll. So, A, Dave Van Horn has respect throughout the industry um, that, you know, they're beating, um, you know, they're beating Ole Miss and, and um, Mississippi State two out of three. They're not sweeping them. Um, and they stayed in the top ten. So, I, I feel like, A, great respect nationally from coaches and people in the game, uh, and, B, uh, when you're doing it in the SEC, uh, it takes it to another level because everybody, it, it's, it's an arms race, and Arkansas is very near the top. Um, but uh, it, it's incredible. Uh, they have a palace, a, a big palace at Baumwalker, a recruiting tools in the Hunt facility, mm-hmm. and they're going to continue to recruit at this level. And, and kids who are, like, seeing them struggle during the end, you know, the end of the year, but yet they still make it to Omaha, that's just an, an allure that they find ways. We know that about Dave Van Horn. And if they do punch their ticket, and, and it, it, honestly, if they win this one, it will be somewhat unexpected. But if they do, uh, completely validates everything Dave Van Horn has done in the buildup. Um, and they just they have a seat among – I mean, you start thinking of the word dynasty in, 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 if they can win – and then get back again next year, four out of five. Yeah. Uh, but dynasties include championships. So you can't really use that word yet, but very, very good. We're talking about top ten in the country status. No question. Tom, we'll leave it there. We'll pick it up Thursday, and we'll know Arkansas's opponent. We'll break that down with you then. Sounds good. See y'all, man. All right, Tom Murphy, Whole Hog Sports, uh, Arkansas Democrat, because that joins us Mondays. Our and partners Thursday. at Bet Online continue to be the number one source for all your betting needs and sports info. Find all the latest sports developments, including updated odds on the NBA playoffs, fights, and even next season's futures. And don't forget that the MLB is back as well. Who are you picking to win the World Series? Bet Online is your continued source for all your sports wagering needs, including live betting and your favorite video. Vegas Casino and Poker Games. It's super easy to get started. So head to the website today or use your mobile device to join and use our promo code BELIEVE, that's B L E A V, to receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet online where the game starts.